The Wyatt Sick Six arrived last night on Monday Night Raw and their introduction was simply incredible. We're going to break that down along with the rest of Monday Night Raw, segment by segment, emoji by emoji. You're watching Allison Analysis. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. WWE kicked off Monday Night Raw in a huge way with the return of Seth freaking Rollins. Nobody expected this. We heard nothing. This was a genuine surprise, and that is one of the best parts of professional wrestling. Seth Rollins, Damian Priest, Money in the Bank confirmed, I cannot wait for this World Heavyweight Championship match. But the fact that Seth Rollins returned so quickly and the fact that he's going straight for the World Championship makes me think that something else is going on here. We know that when Roman Reigns comes back, surely it's going to be Seth Rollins he's coming after. And I'm getting a feeling, just a feeling, that Roman Reigns might return at Money in the Bank and he might straight away take out Seth Rollins and cost him his World Heavyweight Championship opportunity. I reckon, I'm calling it now, SummerSlam will get in Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. I reckon, just like Seth Rollins returned earlier than we expected, I reckon Roman Reigns will too, and their match, well their match is going to be money and a huge, huge SummerSlam match, no doubt about it. This segment was brilliant, it was money, it can take my money, this is how you kick off Monday Night Raw. Braun Strowman then defeated Chad Gable after illegally using Tazawa as a weapon. Referee, that should have been a DQ, but this match was fun. It gets a thumbs up off me, but after the match, well, after the match, Otis finally cemented his turn on Chad Gable, and he pushed him down, and he walked out on him. A subtle round of applause. This is the most relevant Otis has been almost ever in WWE, certainly since his Money in the Bank run. And, I mean, it is truly incredible to see. And, yeah, I'm excited to see where the Otis and Chad Gable stuff goes. Kiana James then took on Zelina Vega and Io Sky in a triple threat Money in the Bank qualifying match. And Liv Morgan cost Zelina Vega when she came out wearing dirty Dominic Mysterio's jacket. Ooh, the love theories continue. But... I mean, I'm guessing we're getting Zelina Vega versus Liv Morgan from here. A little bit random, but hey, the LWO are feuding with the Judgment Day. It does make sense, so I'm not going to hate on it. But Kiana James, I expected her to be in this Money in the Bank match. I expected that to be the breakout match for her. But no, Io's going to be in it again. Can she win it for a second year in a row? I don't know, but this gets a thumbs up. Sami Zayn, the Intercontinental Champion, then came out. And he was quickly followed by Braun Breaker, who wants the Intercontinental Championship. But Sheamus said, not too fast. He came out and he said, I also want a shot. And Sami Zayn said, well, why don't you guys have a match later tonight? This was a lot of fun. A subtle round of applause from me. I'm liking the competition for the Intercontinental Championship and the fact that so many competitors are interested in it. But my question is, should Braun Breaker really be interested in the Intercontinental Championship? Now, of course, we know it worked for Gunther. Going after the Intercontinental Championship and now being elevated to the main event scene it can work, but Braun Breaker is just so good that, to be honest with you, I don't think he needs a mid-card title reign. I think you should have really just given this guy a few solid feuds and then thrown him into that world championship picture and have him become world champion, you know, either later this year or early next year, maybe at WrestleMania, if not before. I mean, sometimes you just get athletes who are just so good in wrestling, they need to be straight away chucked into that main event scene. And Braun Breaker, well, he's one of those guys. I keep saying it, I will continue to say it. Braun Breaker and Oberfemi are the two you know, top stars of the next generation. And I think Braun Breaker's ready for that main event scene now. I really, really do. You should give him a couple of feuds to, you know, develop him a little bit more, season him a little bit more on the main roster, and then give him the big gold belt. I don't think he needs the Intercontinental Championship, but hey, it appears that's the direction they're going in. Carlito then defeated Dragon Lee in a match with a lot of interruptions. I didn't really care for this. Before Drew McIntyre came out and said, I quit. Literally, he just came out. He went to say a few things. He couldn't really be bothered and just said, I quit. I love and can't wait to see where this storyline is going. CM Punk this Friday night on SmackDown. All of this, it's simply money. Drew McIntyre is on the run of his career. Chance and Carter versus Damage Control, specifically Dakota Kai and Kyrie Sane of Damage Control, kind of felt a little bit awkward at times. It felt a bit overly choreographed, and at times people were just standing in the ring waiting for, you know, the next spot. 
Unfortunately, it, this wasn't that great. In fact, it's, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Wasn't awful, but yeah, it just felt overly choreographed to me. We then had Sheamus versus Bron Breaker, and these two guys, well, they were putting on a little bit of a banger. There were some issues. There was a couple of sloppy moments, but for the most part, this was going in the in the, in the direction of becoming a really enjoyable match. Bron Breaker, he's always delightful in the ring. It feels like I'm just praising him constantly, but Sheamus, we know how good Sheamus is, don't we? But Ludwig Kaiser cost Sheamus, well, actually cost them both. It ended up as a DQ. I mean, this match overall was good. It gets a thumbs up, but the DQ kind of halted its momentum. But talking about momentum, I'm going to have to praise Bron Breaker again because this man used his momentum and speared the living daylights out of Ludwig Kaiser. I mean, the impact of this was insane. <laughs> I mean, his spear is just epic. Karrion Cross then challenged one of the New Day to a match, but while Xavier Woods was about to accept the challenge, Kofi did instead, and Xavier Woods just gave Kofi a little bit of a disgusted look, like, why did you do that? It looks like there might be some tensions in the New Day, and I'm all for it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The New Day, it's gone a little stale, and it just needs, needs a little bit of freshening up. Not necessarily a split, but at least, you know, just something, just something to spice it up a little bit. Jey Uso then laid the yeet down and we had a yeet fest as he defeated Finn Balor and Rey Mysterio. Again, there was a lot of, you know, Judgment Day interruption, LWO interruption, all of that stuff. It's kind of becoming a little bit overkill on Monday Night Raw, dare I say. But at the end of the day, yeet, we are yeeting all the way to money in the bank. Jey Uso, yeet in the bank. I mean, money in the yeet, I don't know. We got all the yeets, right? Pat McAfee is loving life, and so is Michael Cole. He's finally figured out how to turn the torch on on his phone for the entrance of Jey Uso, but this was a good main event match. But now, what you're all here for. The introduction of the Wyatt Sick Six. I mean, this was incredible. This, I got goosebumps watching it. I really, truly did. This was one of the best endings in the history of Monday Night Raw. I mean, they said a massacre was coming, and boy, oh boy, was this a massacre, and it was done to perfection. All of the characters in it, all of the six people, well, six people, it was actually five people, plus the lantern, they looked phenomenal. The masks, the costumes, they were, whoo, they were just phenomenal. They really, really were. Nikki Cross, it, well, it seems like Nikki Cross looked just unbelievable. I mean, the amount of, you know, dirt on her arms and all that, it was perfect. All of this was so well thought through. And yes, a lot of people were saying that the QR code stuff dragged on a little bit. But at the end of the day, well, to lead to this, it was excellent. But we don't know what direction is next for them. We know multiple people, including Braun Strowman and Chad Gable, were taken out backstage during this. We didn't see it, but what we did see was them on the floor and bleeding out. I mean, Uncle Howdy actually just tripped over somebody when he was walking backstage. That's how many people they laid out. The entire production backstage was on fire, practically. This was epic. This was something WWE haven't done before. And it just felt so fresh, so unique, and I'm loving it. It's as simple as that. I cannot wait to see what is next. They're bringing something different to Monday Night Raw. And of course, we have to talk about Bray Wyatt, right? This was just such a beautiful tribute to Bray Wyatt. And he'd be, you know, he'd be so happy with this. The one negative, and I'm going to say it, right? I don't like the name. The Wyatt 6 6. I mean, I'm struggling to say it. Sick 6. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Maybe it'll grow on me. I hope it does. But it just, it just seems a bit cringy when, quite frankly, the introduction of them was anything but cringy. It was done to perfection. But overall, this episode of Monday Night Raw, well, it deserves a subtle round of applause from me. I mean, it advanced so many storylines. There were surprises from Seth Rollins to the return, or the debut, of the Wyatt Sick Six. I mean, I really, really enjoyed it. Seriously, this was one of the most easy Raws to watch in quite a while. And Raw's been really good lately too. But the momentum, the streak, it continues. And this was a great episode. That's all here on Allison Analysis for today. But if you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to Wrestling Republic. It helps us out massively, right? We're on the road to, I guess, 2K subscribers. And yeah, let's keep it going. Let's keep the train going. Let's get some more subs in. And please like this video and comment your thoughts, most importantly, in the comments down below. Wrestling Republic, here with a fan's voice of professional wrestling. So share your thoughts and we will share them sometimes too. That's what we want to do. We want to become into 
interactive, and we will see you in the next one. Ba 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 ba. Peace.